Peace and blessings, family. This is your brother, Asar Imhotep, with the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology. And today is the 30th of December. And we have with us a very special, special guest, a good brother all the way from the Democratic Republic of Congo via Israel. Uh, me and him have been exchanging and dialoguing for many years now um, about his native language of Chiluba and the uh, ancient Egyptian language. And we're going to get into a little bit about his life, how he got interested in hieroglyphic studies and the like, and linguistics, uh, relationship with Mubad being able to Lolo and whatever comes to mind. And he's going to give us a presentation today uh, regarding some of his latest uh, work. So all that and more when we'll we return in just a moment. Welcome back. And for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we have a very important interview with our good brother, Kapuya Shiuma. And he goes by other many names, and he may tell us that when he gets in. But um, just want to, oh, I got my second account up. Let me remove that. That's just a backup, just in case the internet falls out. Um, and I'm on the phone, so that's my my, my phone one there. But I um, want to first give a shout out to each and every one of you who have made yourselves known uh, in the chat room. So peace and love to Sister Mika. Uh, hopefully you got some rest from the overnight shift. And we have Brother Teti Ursa Ma'at Rasa Neferu in the building. We have AK243, uh, uh, Ernest Godfrey is in the building. Peace and blessings to you. Our good brother, 42 Tribes, is in the building. Travel Light is in the building. Peace and love to you and everyone else who is uh, joining us in the other stream uh, platforms, meaning uh, Facebook and uh, on X or Twitter, whatever that is. And uh, peace and blessings to Sister Sylvia Stewart in the in the building. Thank you for joining. And so I know it's a little earlier than we normally do, uh, but there's a you know big time difference from Israel to the United States. And so this is kind of a, a perfect time. So even people on the West Coast who are three hours behind us, even though it'd be super early for them, and they want to catch it live, they can they can do it and not uh, be too sleepy. And, you know, and it won't be too late for our good brother uh, over there in Israel right now. But before we start, just, a, you know, a couple of announcements, of course. If you have not gotten the latest book, this is it here, Race and Identity in Ancient Egypt, Volume 1. And I do apologize for the noise that's in the background. Um, you can get this at Amazon and on my site, and as well as the text Muntu Wan Zambi, Portrait of Human as God's Special Creation, uh, by Dr. Chilema Lema Mukinge. And he's also out of the Democratic Republic of Congo and a native uh, Luba speaker, Chiluba speaker. And this is a book that uh, we published last year. 
and we're getting ready to do another publication by the same author and so uh be on the lookout for that when it comes through but without further ado i want to welcome our good brother kapuya she if i'm saying that correctly chuma 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 chuma, chuma. Yeah, it's a, it's a spelling that was um, yeah. adopted in, in Congo, so we are still <laughs> discussing about it. <laughs> First of all, uh, <laughs> good evening and uh, good morning to all the brothers and sisters, to the family. And as Brother Asa Imotep said, my name is Kapuya Chuma, and I am from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I am 46 years old with four kids, and I'm currently living in Israel for quite some time about 20 years um yeah so <laughs> i am primarily a software developer i've um i've worked in software development and many other fields in computers but currently i am i'm working more with um, google products so like cloud computing stuff so yeah then in my spare time i do uh, research on african tradition and religion culture and obviously to um i'm doing research on egyptology and specifically um ancient, ancient egyptian scripts so i try to focus on um on its structure how it was built why and what was used uh, basically so I am from the luba tribe in the democratic republic of congo it's a very uh, large ethnic group it's um it's about 30 million people in the democratic republic of congo and we do have um other offshoots in zambia in malawi and in angola okay so that's where i base my research even though i also include um the the, the congo word the the you know the congo empire um uh, word which include the, the purely congo people and the other affiliates like the ndongo in angola the mbundu and all the others so we share the same heritage um linguistically and culturally so that's uh, basically what i do <clears throat> indeed indeed yes um how did you get into the the study of the um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic script and, and language. And, um, you know, what was that process? So, well, I've, I've always been very interested in, in history in general, like, you know, uh, human, human history, not uh, specifically focusing on African history, but I like history of every country, nation and continent uh, since my childhood. And then when I moved to Israel, I was confronted um, with racism, you know, kind of the, the way they view black people. And obviously, a, I would like to say an intelligent person will start to look for some, some, um, something to lean on, you know. Then I try to explore my own, my own self, who am I, where I come from you know me as a black person as an african person what was my origin and um because i spoke english back then i kind of switched to the the english speaking word so then i felt i fell on brother asa it's one of my inspiration maybe i never told him that <laughs> but it's an, an opportunity for me to say so i've been following for many many years and a lot of other brothers like african americans and from there i started um listening to sheikh antadiop work teofilo benga and, and mubabinge bilolo people that you are probably familiar with and i first uh fell on sheikh antadiop when he said ancient egyptians were black people black africans you know i didn't have that much doubt but I didn't have no nothing. I mean, nothing to prove that. I didn't have nothing to to support that. And you know, with years, one day my brother called me and he said, "Listen, I fell on a video of uh, Professor Mubabinge Bilolo, and he's saying that ancient Egyptian in it's written in Chiluba language. Can we check that?" 
said, well, why not? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I have time. I have plenty of time. I'm not a person who, you know, goes around, you know, um, all the time. So I sit in the house and that's when, uh, that's where I started exploring the, um, the ancient, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Yeah. So it was a very long process. Um, it was ex exhausting process. Um, as you know, it's things that were written 5,000 years ago, and you need to try to match it with the language of today and the context of today, and without forgetting the strong influence of the European culture in our own Bantu world. I mean, we, we lost a lot in terms of language, in terms of culture and tradition. It's very hard to find the accurate information. Okay. But, you know, by slowly be, we are advancing with, with the help of other brothers and with the exchanges we do with uh, like Brother Asar and many others from, from Cameroon and um, all across the continent. So that's how I fell on this uh, subject of um, studying ancient Egyptian scripts to uh, Sheikh Antediop and Muba um, Binge Bilolo, who is actually my, my mentor. So all the work I do, I submit to him, we discuss. He validates or not, or he gives me some um, other orientations. Okay, and we also work together with people who are in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in the village and in the capital city Kinshasa. People who speak the language, who speak Chiluba, who know people who know the tradition. Okay, who can explain, you know, the the deepness of some words that we may you might use today as you know simple like you know like a candy but it can explain to you why they call it a candy and why was it called a candy in some specific context so that's how we 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 that's what we do to actually um try to read correctly um ancient egyptian scripts and i think that's part of the uh um the conversation that is that is often missing is because in the in modern egypt you don't have people who speak the native language so no. you can't just go to them and ask uh um, right. mm. you know what do you mean when you say this because that like they you know islam is totally disconnected you know, people in that region. It, it's it's, the, same, the, it's the same with culture. myself. I mean, I, I was yeah. born in the city. I grew up in the city. I don't know all the ceremonies that can go around a childbirth, for example. I, I never seen it. I yes. cannot explain it. So I can see the word written in, in ancient Egypt, but I may not understand it just because I never witnessed it. Okay. It doesn't mean that it doesn't uh, exist, but you need to dig. You need to ask questions. You need to talk to, you know, to elders. There are people who, who are Christians, but they know the tradition. They don't speak about it, not because they don't yeah. want to, but simply they, they don't find it um, useful to talk about. They just don't talk about it, but they know. Okay. So maybe later on, I will try to give you also one example that came from my own mother, who is an, an evangelical Christian. But how she helped me to she helped me to um, understand some ancient Egypt uh, word without even uh, knowing that what she was doing she would kind of open me a big door to uh, this tradition. <clears throat> Indeed, and this is one of the reasons why one of my strategies when I'm doing my my work is to try to is two things because you know my initiations into the Yoruba, uh, Ifa tradition and, and, and priesthood within that tradition, it gives me some grounding in a traditional African re religion and culture. But of course, with me being African-American, I did not grow up on the continent. So there's just certain things that I, I won't know and miss, and I got to rely on testimony. And, and as you said, right. a lot of people are Christians and Muslims. So in, in these areas, a lot of things have died, which is why I always try to seek out any text that is written about the tradition and language from exactly somebody that is from there who has went through rites and 
and uh, rituals and the like in their tradition. Because them not realizing it, it helps to explain certain things in ancient Egyptian, which is one of the reasons why I love uh, Dr. Fukiao's work, you know, uh, right. out of the Congo uh, yeah. is, as well, but of a key Congo speaker. Um, but, you know, he's writing about his initiations, what he grew up doing, not realizing that he's adding context, he's adding some meat on the bones to what's mm. going on in, in, in ancient Egypt. Exactly. And I'm able to exactly. make those connections because I can do the linguistic work in, in a way that shows that these these two traditions came from the same parent, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you have with uh, a, a presentation that you're you're going to do, and I'm gonna uh, give you the floor. So uh, the only one that I have here is the the the, the conversation two. Um, I know there was another one, um, but I don't have that on this computer. It's on my phone. Um, okay. so you let me know if this is the correct okay screen and this one, right? Yes, that's one. And it has a, right. oh. so we'll start from there. Let me, um, um, four from sl slide four. I'm just trying to see the difference but that might so i may i may just do it full screen uh so right. people can see. so uh so we'll do that like that and i'll mute out okay okay so <clears throat> i i can can i speak i i don't i can't hear you I muted myself out, so all right. so oh, you won't hear this background noise. Uh, okay, right. Okay, so um, this says who were the ancient Egyptians? Um, according to Sheikh Antadiop, I mean, we we all know the the story, uh, uh, the book he wrote about the ancient Egyptians. He said that he he was sure that ancient Egyptians were Africans, and he knows. Through his linguistic studies, that they they might they they have moved at least some of them to Senegal. The um, the I think the Serer people, okay. And he also added that he has archaeological proofs that ancient Egyptians went to Central Africa and settled in what is the current um, current time. Uh, what is the present in the present time uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, specifically in the Shaba region? And he said there were proofs, but what we know from those proofs is in I think in 1994 they stopped archaeological researches and you know covered up everything and they uh, they left it. That area is a, is a swampy um, um, region, so it's all underwater. Uh, what I understood and. <clears throat> And the other um, the other proof came. I mean, the other um, uh, direction uh, from came from Bumba Binge Bilolo, who also said that he is convinced that the um, the ancient Egyptian script is written in Chiluba language. So here we can see um, a bit a map of the Luba Empire, the Luba uh, Kingdom. Slide five. Uh, slide five. Okay, yeah. So this is where they settle. It's called the Upemba Depression. It's in um, the, the region is called today Katanga region. And from there, they created an empire with a capital named Bukama, which reminds us a bit uh, of, um, of uh, Kam in Egypt. So the capital of the Luba Empire was called Bukama. And from there, they spread uh, south to Zambia. I think uh, three of the five main um, ethnic groups in Zambia identified themselves as Luba people. And you have some other branch in Malawi, and you also have in uh, Angola. So you can see in the Democratic Republic of Congo, 
from the Upemba Depression in Katanga. Some moved to Kasai region, some moved to South Kivu, and some went all the way up to the, what is called today Kisangani. Uh, the, they are called the Wagenia people. Okay. <clears throat> so how how did we how did we pro uh, uh, proceed to support our our claims? So it was very, it's a very simple um, procedure, but also very controversial because some people look at it as a, um, as a kind of appropriation. We, they, like the Luba people want to, to take over. It's mainly for ideological re reasons. It's not really based on any, a, any fact. Like they consider um, as Pan-Africans, we should not make ancient Egypt as a private property of some specific tribe. But, you know, we, we don't base our work um, on that. We don't, we don't really uh, think uh, in, in terms of political or geopolitical reason. We, we're trying to do some research and whatever we find, we, we publish it. It's, it's, it's there. Everyone can see um, if there is any discussion like I do with, uh, with Brother Asa, we exchange we exchange, you know, we, we find if there is something that is not correct, you will tell me or I will tell him. So they, they basically that's what we do in with uh, Professor Bilolo and um, many other things. So we proceeded by eliminating languages that do not, um, do not match the, the current language configurations uh, that linguists are using in Africa. So we know that languages are divided in Niger, Congo, Bantu, um, Cushitic languages, and, and so forth. So we ask a very simple question. We are talking about ancient Egypt. Uh, that is in slide seven. We, we are talking about ancient Egyptians, but how did they call simple things? A simple thing, a human being. What did they say a human being is? How, how did they say this is a person, this is, this is an individual, this is a human being? So we, we know for sure that in all Bantu languages, um, a human being is defined by, is called by the, the, the name Ntu. Okay, and two, it, it has very, very uh, many variations. Um, you, you have obviously with the prefix, can be Mutu, Muntu, Moto, Oto, Ubuntu, like in, in the uh, southern and uh, southern African part, like the Zulus. But it's it's basically the same word too. Okay. And in the same language family, we have the same word that also means the head, human head. Okay. So we check in ancient history. How did they say human being? They, they simply say it in two. Just like you know the uh, the uh, the three um, the three writing that you see here, a head, just to say human being, and the the last one is the plural, so it's a man and and woman, so bound to. So in ancient Egyptian uh, writing system, they didn't always write the prefixes. They left in two. But the ba is represented by the three marks of the plural and the man and the woman. So we can read it. Uh, bound to. But further than that, um, if we move to uh, slide eight, we see other versions of the exact same word. Um, the first one, you see the mountain, you have a N, which is a, a leaf. Um, it's, a, it's a mint uh, leaf. It's called Luenia. So it's Enya. So it's used in, in Egyptian um, text for N. And on the other side, uh, let me finish with the first one. And we, you have a, a mountain, uh, which is called Mutunda. Okay, so you, you can hear the two inside in the word Mutunda. So they use the same system. They, they cut a piece of each word and build the word Bantu. Okay. And you move to the, the second one, you have a bird. Um, it's called Kabutu or Kabutwe. Okay, so you also have here the two or the Tue, which means um, human being. So from here, we can clearly say that, <coughs> sorry, that ancient Egyptians, they said two 
to say a human being. So they are banned to people, right? And we can move further. Um, the word Bantu in Chiluba language, in Chiluba cosmology, religion, it doesn't really mean only human being. It means entity. It means place. Okay. So if I want to say a thing in Chiluba, I will say Chi Ntu. Chi is a, a it's, it's, it's like a small person, a small human. So it's a thing. So we say Chi Ntu. And you can see also here the two writing for to, i mean the two yeah the two glyphs the the mountain and the bird to say thing here it's a plural so it's a being to and the second one as well is being to so to say a place in chiluba we, we say moon to just like a human being or kun to okay <clears throat> So we can, from here, draw a conclusion. It might be, um, some people might not like it, but we, we can say that um, ancient Egyptians, they were Africans, they were black, and they were Bantus, because they simply, they told us who they are. They were Bantus. They, they said moon to, to say human being, okay? So from when I, uh, I found this, of course, I worked with Professor Bilolo and another one of my, my, my colleagues is in, is in Kinshasa, is, uh, is a Congolese uh, from his mother, but a Hausa from Nigeria, uh, from his father's side. So we work together. He also knows the tradition. He helped me a lot in this work. So from there, I, I decided I didn't want to do, I'm not a linguist. Um, I, I do not have proper training for that, but I wanted to do something else, something different. I wanted to, um, I liked to deal with difficult stuff, difficult words, difficult um, glyphs, okay? And the first one I worked with is on, uh, on the slide nine. yeah um okay it's a bit late on okay this is a word that is um translated in <coughs> in uh in egyptian a dictionary like annals you know like writing collection of of uh text or books but when i look at this word i don't really see it in, in that way because I see something suspicious is the three dots um, in the determinative part. Those three dots, they generally represent um, uh, dust or, or um, wood chip, okay? And I didn't see really the, um, the utility of this, uh, this uh, glyph here, because if they want to say it's a text, they don't need to add dust. So I, I try to dig a little bit but the reading already gave me uh the word itself we have if you move to uh slide 10 <clears throat> you have k n n and u okay so it's um kononu kononu so the the o the final o applies for the second n and the the first n so it's ko no no the, the o it applies to all all the um all the, the the consonant okay then we have the the mark of uh feminine it's a d or chi and we have the determinative the, this word i as i viewed it it's, it was very difficult for the scribe to explain the meaning of the word i mean a person could read the word can could um the, could know the sound but the meaning was very difficult that's why he added three determinatives in one word so we have the dust we have the papyrus scroll and we have this uh scrape i think you call it <clears throat> an instrument for scraping a plane okay so when i 
looked at this, uh, especially the what what gave me a hint was the the, the powder and the, the sawdust. So I, I went, I just went to the Chiluba online dictionary and I typed kononu and it gave me the answer. This word means to look into details, okay, to look at something, to examine something in details. So the the bone and the the wood chip here it means you know you're looking at um some some data some in information you're looking at it piece by piece small just like you you, you are searching in the dust and ov obviously we have the papyrus scroll that uh, means uh it's a, it's an abstraction it's a, it's not a it's a, a an intelligent um uh, idea if you can allow me to say so so i say lukonono in Chiluba, it means to look into details, uh, to examine something in details. I don't know if you have any questions so far at this point. No. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I uh, I don't know, I don't hear Brother Asa. So from here we, we come to our today's subject. Um I I wanted to can you hear me? Yes, I can now. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh if you want me to respond, I'll respond through the phone. Uh so I won't disturb the flow of the uh all right, I get it. Of the other thing. So oh, okay. let me put myself back on mute. Okay. Okay. So uh, here we, we come to the um the 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 subject that uh we discussed with Brother Assad. That I mean he, he convinced me to <laughs> to come to this show. It's this uh tradition is called Budinta. Um Budinta is um some other African people live in Central Africa, like um, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo Brazzaville, or maybe Angola. They might know this uh, ceremony in a different name, uh, Wale. It's called Wale. It's a, a Wale is a woman that lives uh, secluded from from the society. Uh, generally, it's on <clears throat> on a first birth, or if she had uh, a previous problem, like children dying or miscarriages in a previous uh, pregnancy so when she gives birth to a child that is healthy she will uh, she will live um isolated from the society and she will um she will they will they will put um ngula it's called ngula uh, on her body it's a kind of red um red ochre okay so the, like if you know the Imba people in Namibia, they use this um, this red ochre, this red uh, dust on their body. That's it's called Ngula. So Budinta is a, the equivalent of this Wale uh, ceremony. Wale is generally it's a, it's a word from the Mongo tribe in the Western uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. <clears throat> so um, in the old days when they, they, they were uh, abnormal death, um, of the inhabitant of a village or livestock or uh, bad harvest, major losses in wars and multiple cases of miscarriage and infant mortality. A ceremony called Budinta was organized. It was planned, organized and executed by women. They, uh, they would smear Budinta earth reddish clay uh, around the eyes or also on the side of the face and neck. On the other side, a different color, which uh, this was to show the problems related to blood and death. So they will use uh, this red um, uh, uh, clay uh, to symbolize blood, and they will also use the um, white clay, uh, which symbolize chances. Uh, chance, sorry. Uh, the white clay is called uh, lupemba. Okay. If you you hear in Bantu language the name pemba. Uh, it means white, uh, basically. That's what it means. <clears throat> you you have many many African cities with that name. Um, it's the, the name of 
one of the names of the uh, the ancient Egyptian city of uh, of Memphis. <clears throat> Uh, just one second. Okay. So, yes, in, in the case of this um, a ceremony uh, of, of birth, the, the taboo is broken by a specific uh, dances. The, the wale, the, the, the woman that, that lives uh, secluded, Will come will come out accompanied by um, a group of women elders, and those those women uh, they they kind of conduct a kind of procession, and in that procession they will take her to a market and show show her to the community. I can't now. I'm on the show. I'm on video. Okay, can you uh, can you please move to uh, slide fifteen? Is this it or is it that? Uh, uh, no, the the slide before fifteen. Yes. So you can see uh, below the the woman, uh, the Mpamba, the one that lives um, secluded. You can see a woman that is standing with a, I mean, her hands are kind of um, in, a, in a cloth, so which means she's separated. And the second glyph is the white clay, Lupemba. And the other one is Ngula, Ngula or Nkula. It depends on the, the, the pronunciation, the different uh, dialects. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if you, in slide 16, we have this. Um, this image is very uh, common on, on Google. And generally, they explain it by saying it's a kind of um, Nubian dancers uh, dancing for... Uh, Egyptian princess. This is it's not correct uh, because we see clearly that those women are having a, a kind of stone on the head. Okay, that stone is called uh, it's called mudinta. Okay, it's a block of stone, and that stone in the Luba tradition they will um, they will uh, kind of put on it um, oil, palm oil. You know, palm oil when it's crude, it's it's red, it's reddish like blood. Okay. And they will also add um, lupemba, the white clay. So you can see clearly both colors, the, the oil on top of it, and you can see the, uh, the, the, the white uh, clay uh, at the bottom of this uh, stone. So if you, you look at the text, um, this text, I didn't get it from any Egyptology book, but I got it from a book. It's called, um, I think... Uh, les, les configurations des, in, des les communications des indigènes uh, du Kasai avec les âmes des morts. It's a, it's a book. The, the person who wrote that text is also the same who wrote the book uh, in Bible Noire. So it, it's it's a book that re, that talks about how the Luba people relate to death and to the dead. You know, all the tradition, the ceremony like divination and 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 all uh, so ma magic stuff uh, as well. So in this book, they describe this very short text describes exactly the picture we see on the left side. If you uh, you read it well, the 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 part that I put in in capital letter. So it's a uh, <clears throat> so as soon as they are released, they present themselves in picturesque costume. The, the loins are tightly uh, girded with a sort of trousers made of multiple strings in braided fiber from Mwabi. Mwabi is a, is a, is a tree uh, for chains. And Lusanga. Lusanga as well is a, is a tree. And from, from which fall forward a small triangular loincloth, the entire body is anointed with red earth mudinta or mudita mixed with palm oil 
as well as the hair gathered on the, the sides in small braids, bells, tint at their belt. Okay. And we have um, the bead necklace on the arm and the wrist. So you can see those dancers. Those are the, the women that lived secluded that are now coming out of um, and are being presented uh, to the society. That's how they, they dress basically in the villages today. It's still, um, it, that's how the, the ceremony is still held. So in gen especially in the Mongo area, okay? So women are very lightly dressed and because it's also a ceremony that men don't take part in, so they can um, they can be uh, dressed like this, okay? almost like um, half naked. <clears throat> so this ceremony is also represented in another image on slide 17. So the slide um, 16 shows us the 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 common people uh, view of the ceremony. So it's um, elder women dancing, um, and the this uh, the the women that and I mean the secluded women coming out and dressed like this and dancing. But if you move to slide seventeen, it shows us the religious part of this text, and it's coded. It's it's not a, 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 the image um, cannot be understood by someone that doesn't really know the, the religion, the tradition uh, behind this. So you can see here, we have the mudinta, the stone in the beginning, in white clay and reddish cloth tied on his, uh, his hip, okay? And you see here, uh, one, two, three, five elders here that represent the, the, the bakulu, the, the ancient, the elders of the, the clan of the tribe. And here they are represented and as ancient Egyptian um, <clears throat> ancient Egyptian uh, uh, gods. So each one of them is holding a knife. You can see the knife is not it's a wooden knife. It's not a, a, a metal. It's a wood. And some are red. Some are slightly um, kind of gray, light gray. So again, we're coming back to the same thing. We have uh, Lupemba the um, the white clay and the reddish part the the ngula that represent blood so you can see here um on the right on the the, ex the extreme right you see the 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 ba bird the, the mpamba here she represents the mpamba mpamba is a is a night bird in in the luba tradition that comes to take to steal people's souls okay and here this bird, um, Pamba, has the exact same name with the the woman that is uh, that that lives secluded and is coming out uh, through the ceremony. So they are both called Pamba. So here, instead of uh, putting those women um, that we saw in the previous image, they put the bird Pamba. So here it's much more spiritual. They are talking about death. They are talking about spirit. So they use this uh, bird that, um, that comes to, to, to take uh, people's spirit. And between the elders and the, the, the bird, you can see the market, okay? So again, the text on the right describes, um, uh, Brother Asal, can you move to slide 17? Seventeen. Uh, no, that that is not sixteen. Yes, this one, right? So the text here describes a, exactly. Again, this text also was taken from the very same book, um, the. Les, les communications des, des indigènes du Kasai avec uh, les âmes des morts. So here it says, in the case of the propitiation of birth, the taboo is broken by one of these dances during which the Bampamba, women previously living isolated before returning to normal existence, present themselves at the market. So you can see 
the woman Mpamba, the, represented here by the bird, and presenting herself in the market. You can see there is a pile of uh, of, of uh, um, products, okay, vegetables and uh, and other stuff, <clears throat> and brandishing a wooden knife, muele wabupangu. So painted halfway with lupemba on uh, on one side and ngula or ngola on the other. So you can see those other ladies, the elders, they are brandishing this uh, this um, knives. Some are red, some also are, um, are painted with lupemba. So we, we can clearly see the person who wrote this book, he, he had no idea um, about ancient Egypt. He, he was a priest, uh, actually. He lived in the Luba uh, homeland for about in since 1929, I think, until the independence in 1960. I think he, he got married to a he he became he went through Luba initiation at, at least partially for him to have access to this kind of information. So he then married the Luba woman. His daughter is still alive. She lives in Belgium. And uh, she, what I understood, she still has a lot, a lot of um, and information and document that his uh, father left. But, you know, <laughs> she lives in Belgium and uh, we, we don't have yet access to those, to those documents. So this guy recorded the, I can say, the last purely initiated uh, Luba, um, in, in, like Luba people in, in information. So those nobles, those um, people who kept the tradition, kings and um, other nobilities, they had this information they gave to him because he went through initiation and was married to a Luba woman. Okay. So he, he was basically the last person to collect this uh, type of information. So that's why we, we still continue to we still continue using his, his, his work to kind of match what we do as research in, in ancient Egypt. Okay. So this uh, tradition, uh, I, I will tell you also a bit what I said in the beginning, something I, I uh, had with, with my mom. My, my mother, she lives with us, with us here in Israel. She, she's, she, she's Quite, quite old she's 70 years old and she was just eating you know old people food you know don't eat sugar don't eat this and don't eat that so she was complaining she was saying well you know i'm, I'm tired of eating this um white people stuff they always tell me don't eat this don't eat fufu don't eat fufu and, and you know i like to eat fufu and she said but you know anyway i am i am not uh, it's not really a big issue because when i was a child i didn't eat fufu and there are specific kids um in in the luba tradition who do not cannot handle uh fufu so they will always you know uh, vomit when they eat it so they have a special name they are considered uh, gifted children they are called um bana um, bamapanga Kupanga um, is to to gift, okay. So she she um, she said, you know, I was one of those gifted kids, and um, they they are called numbi in the Luba tradition, or also um, kadibidia. Kadibidia it means that doesn't eat fufu. So she said, yeah, I was one of those kids, one of those numbi. Then I started asking questions. But first of all, I laughed at her. I would say that ah, you see, but but you know. Um, Probably the ancestors just caught up with you because you abandoned them and you you went through this Christianity stuff. Now they are telling you that you are still a numbi, even if you live in Israel. You are seventy years old. You have to go back to you know keeping the tradition. So we we started the discussion. Then I asked, what does it with those kids? Uh, what did they do exactly? She said, well, the, the numbi is uh, they are also called mwana um, yenga. So when she said that word, I knew that I got something. Yenga is the, the moon, the ancient Egyptian new moon. Okay. And you can see in the ancient Egyptian text, they describe those children. They, they, they will generally, I think, call him Iyi in, um, you know, uh, translation Esperanto um, 
and trans transcription but it's those kids okay this is what the the catholic people use today in 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 the church those children that come with the priest so those are the 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 monai bana yenga so that's a plural so when she said yenga i asked her what is yenga she said what well, yenga is a moon that was my first time you know i'm over 40 years old that's the first time i i heard that the moon was also called yenga in chiluba language i never heard it so she said in a new moon um they will give uh candies and eggs boiled eggs to those children because those children are special they they are kind of messengers between the gods and the um and the, the you know the living so this is how we we fall on most of the 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 tradition the ancient egyptian tradition that you find in the luba homeland so it's always by accident because people simply as i said they don't talk about it um some of them because they converted to christianity some of them because they just want to forget it what for do i do i need this younger thing if i'm living in a city right so yeah this is um one of the the, the story I, I wanted to tell and so if you move to we we'll go back to our slide 18 so you can see here we we are used to to say um like the egyptian soul is called ba all right so i tried to find other words other writing of the same word um to say soul in ancient egyptian dictionary so you can see sometimes they will write the same name with a goat or the bird or they will use a incense okay so if now we 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 take into account that um the bird as i say in mpamba you can see in coptic uh just above the green bird uh, above his head on the right it's written mpambe that is the coptic writing of this this uh ba word i don't know why they they decided that we should say ba not from say the other part of the word but in coptic it's very clear they they give the the full word is is in pambe okay so you can see a goat a goat in chiluba language is called mpumba so ancient egyptian they they had this habit of uh, playing with uh with word they would use the same consonant structure and they would decide which vowel they will inject inside in between the, the consonant to give it a, a correct uh pronunciation and that will depend on the determinative they put um on the the right side so we can see the goat is called mpumba is used uh to say soul you uh, can see also the same bird mpamba so this time is real name and you can see mpembo which is incense so they would just you know inject the the vowel to say um <coughs> the soul but there is another level of reading this when they talk about a goat they don't talk about any goat they talk about a male goat that has a smell okay you 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 smell something but you can't catch the smell you can't touch it it's invisible it's just like a like a spirit like a soul like a ghost okay you can't smell it but you cannot see it you cannot touch it so they use something that has the same uh, consonant structure more or less plus it has also this other aspect of a smell something that is not uh, that is uh, that you cannot touch physically the same with the incense um, it's also a smoke okay you can smell it you can even see it you can even try to touch it but you can never catch a smoke because you know it's just like a ghost so that's why they use those three ways uh, to write the same word um a spirit okay <clears throat> okay so uh we can move to slide 20. So from slide 20, I tried to, to bring uh, to bring some other uh, words just, you know, to, to support 
um, I will I will, I will claim that the the uh, Egyptian scripts were written in Chiluba language, and in slide twenty, I'm try to I, I try to talk about <clears throat> the the Milky Way, which is the name of our uh, galaxy as we know it, and I try to uh, to show that the name Milky Way may not be um, of Greek origin, as we can see here. Uh, the name of the galaxy, and you see as a determinative, we have a we have a cow. Okay, it can also be that they wanted to say the galaxy is something that um, that looks like a cow. Okay, uh, no, uh, sorry, that looks like a cow milk. Okay, I, I would explain why. And we can see here <clears throat> the the word you have a n, you have a s, you have l, you have m, and we have she or g. Okay, I read this mu. So I start from the center mu. Then I want to I go to l mulangi. Then the same l again langi with the the other she on the other side. This is the name of the Milky Way in Chiluba language mulangi langi. What does it mean mulangi langi? It's like it's something that that has no no end. Um, it can be um <clears throat> uh, a gooey a gooey matter okay like milk like cream okay like uh like butter so this is what mulangi in me means so that is the first uh name on slide 21 um sorry brother Asa. Yes, so you are there on uh, Mulanji Lanji. So here I show uh, let I mean uh, um, consonant by consonant how, how we, sh we should read it, and below you have another version of the exact same word. You find it in Chiluba language in Chiluba dictionary. You can find it everywhere. Munaji Naji. Okay, the L disappears and it becomes a N. Instead of mulangi langi, you pronounce here munaji nagi. Okay, so you can see here two versions of the exact same um, the same name. You find them in ancient Egypt, and you find them in a living language that is spoken, as I said, by roughly uh, thirty-five million people all across uh, southern DRC and Angola, and Zambia, and uh, and uh, and Malawi. <coughs> Okay, so um, yeah, so as I say, this is the name of the Milky Way. So from here, we can also kind of conclude that the Milky Way as we know it today has its origin in ancient Egypt. I mean, the name Milky Way has its origin in, in ancient Egypt. <clears throat> so in we can move to 22. We have um a a greater bear constellation okay in ancient egypt it was uh called the the foot um uh yeah so it's an animal foot so we can see here in in chiluba language this read musonga <clears throat> musonga okay musonga it, it means uh it means an animal foot basically what you see in the picture is exactly what it is it's a, a, an animal foot and here as well, we have two versions of the same uh, the same uh, object, okay? The same part of the animal. We have we have Musonga and we have Muzadi. So you can see again here two words describing the same thing, and you find them in ancient Egypt and you find them in Chiluba language as well. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on, before you uh, go further. Yes. Uh, this this reminds me of a conversation that uh, Jean Claude and Boli and I are having right now on my Facebook page because I showed in you know using some other words along with the hieroglyphs how that where you have ng which the Egyptologists uh, give a quasi pronunciation as k, and how this interchanges with sh mm -hmm. in uh, in a in a 
in the language. And so what we what we concluded is that, you know, these are essentially what we would call in linguistics allophones. And depending on the vowel, the following vowel is how it was pronounced. So you can see here that we have Musunga. It followed with the A and it would be ng, right? But right. this Zaji, you see the voicing, you know, of this, um, and it's followed by I, and then you know, so it has that palatal sound that shift or shift, right. mm -hmm. you know. So you can mm -hmm. see in real time the difference in the the uh, vowels and uh, and what glyphs that they use. So the fact that you have two variants of the same and they're both present in Chinuba mm -hmm. greatly strengthens the argument of at minimum a genetic relationship uh, and I know there's the other argument that you know they migrated down but uh, I'll stop there and you can take it. Correct yes <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so um, we can move to slide 23 In, in this slide 23, I, I wanted to um, to show something very uh, um, specific to um, ancient Egyptian script. Not always they they will write um, prefix and suffixes. They will sometimes only write the root word itself. So my guess is um, two things. Maybe they tried to save space. Because in African languages, in general, the same word can have multiple uh, um, suffixes and it will change its meaning. So it, it made no use to write the, the, the suffix and the determinative to, um, to, you know, to, to have this, uh, all those changes show, showed up, uh, showing up on, on the word. So what they decided uh, is to cut the word short and use the determinative. The determinative will tell us exactly um what uh, suffix we should add so here we have two um princ principles of the luba um cosmology it's a it's a little bit they like the yin and the yang in in um in in uh, china or um i, I think in, in in eastern asia so in chiluba we have a chakani okay and a chai uh, chakani it comes from the verb I can say the root word here is aka. Okay. So this is what is written in this uh, um, this glyph on the left is aka. Okay. Then you have these two poles um, showing something that is standing straight. Okay. Kwakaja, it's meant to straighten. Okay. Chakani, it means something that is perfect. Okay. That is standing straight. And its opposite is. Uh, it's chai, it's, um, as I said, even and odd, okay? Chai, and here they wrote it in a specific way using uh, this uh, eye with two feet, showing the movement, showing also the verb to go. If you look into ancient Egyptian dictionaries, you will find the verb to go or to come is written exactly like this, okay? The verb to go, is co is in Chiluba is um is a kuya and the verb to come is kuya. Okay, so you can see chai, they use the verb to go, but to mean something completely different. Okay, something that means uh, odd, something that means bad, okay, <clears throat> or something uh, negative. So in, in the Luba tradition, there is always this confrontation be between. Um, chakani and and the chai and um it's also used as one of the uh names of god makumbu which is the praises for god so god is a is a muakane muakane it means something some someone that is perfect a perfect uh, person so then uh slide 24 we have, um, I tried to collect some um, other uh, stuff here. That's, I, I think, 
it's maybe the most important findings we have at this point is the names of the hours in in african tradition hours don't have numbers we don't say uh, it, it's one o'clock two three twelve no we we have names for each hour and this this is no exception i mean for for the luba uh, people and uh, the ancient Egyptian, they did exactly the same. So we can see the first, um, the first uh, line. You have uh, mid midday, middle. Okay, you have um, midnight and you have noon, midday. So it's written in a very specific way. You have a face that we, if you are familiar with um, with ancient Egyptian uh, scripts, you know the face is Ulu. It's used to say Ulu above okay and you have the heart the heart here we generally uh, try to to make it sound Iba, but the heart in the in the chiluba language doesn't have a, a single name it has many names like muchima and um here specifically it means doesn't mean the heart itself it means the inside the inside the, the middle the inside of of uh, of a human person of a human uh, body or the middle of anything the center so in that uh in that way we we read it munda munda is mean the inside okay and you have the face ulu as we said so you read it munda nkulu in chiluba munda nkulu it means noon it means midnight but here they added the sun as the determinative to say it's midday and the, the sky and the star to say midnight. So you can see it's the very same word. It's mundankulu, like we say, mundankulu amunya, which means 12, um, like noon, and mundankulu wabutuku, which means um, midnight. Okay. <clears throat> so the second line we have 2 p.m. 2 p.m. is is said in Chiluba Ditwan Komba. Komba is meant to ascend, the ascending sun. And Ditwa is the verb to to shoot, to poke. As you can see, I mean the, the image itself tells what uh, how we should read it. Okay, to poke or to shoot an animal. Okay, if you go hunting, you will say kutwa nyama. Okay. So you can see here Ditwan Komba. Wa, Munya. Again, we have the sun and we have a standing man. It means the sun is standing right above our head. Okay, so this is 2 p.m. <clears throat> and if we go down again, we have um, other two. We have uh, that is 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. Uh, yeah, 3 a.m. 3 is called Nzolwa Kumpala. Zolwa Kumpala is the first, the first chicken. If I I try to translate it um, simply, um, I, I mean it means the first, um, yeah, the first, the first, the first chicken. If I, I I would just stick to that. And the second one, 4 a.m. is called Zolomuibidi. It means the second chicken. So we have 4 a.m. and 3 a.m. both represented. Uh, in Zulu. By the way, um, the 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 you you can find the S or Z and the L, which means in Zulu. The N, as I, I we we discussed earlier with with what I saw, when we we say names of animals in most Bantu languages, we add uh, N. We don't say Z Zulu. We say Zulu. So even if the N is not written here, but when we speak. We say it, though, those uh, names. We say it for for elephants, uh, for lions, for um, for for leopard, like uh, you know, kashama, ntambwa, nshimba, okay, or mbua, or mbuji. We always add this n nasalized uh, sound. <laughs> Hold so on keep... one second. Yes, please. Uh, I just want to um, stop just so I can have this on on record. Uh, when I review it, because this is something that I've been meaning to in, uh, investigate. So you see how, like in that, in that uh, very where it has a so-called the sa the the sa 
the the T, what I found doing my linguistic comparisons is that the T suffix in Egyptian also corresponds, of course, to chi. Um, in in G, the I, but also M, like it will either be Ma or Mu, mainly Mu. And I'm wondering if that T also corresponds to the N. And so this would be a good test to start looking at all the words for animals in um, the Egyptian, and if they have that um, T suffix mm -hmm. to, to see what corresponding prefixes are in Chiluba. Anyway, well, by, uh, by, by the way, if, if you if you if you look at the, the in the Chiluba dictionary, you will see, see it written also chizolo to say a, a, a chicken. Okay, so the chi is present. Even if we don't use it uh, often, we say nzolo, but chizolo is also uh, is also correct. Righteous. Hmm. Okay, so and then we have uh, the last uh, glyph here represent um the, the morning star um it's um, sometimes uh, this name is attributed to uh the serious uh star okay and it's called chibundu bundu chibundu bundu is it's uh, 5 a.m in in chiluba it comes from the verb kubunduka kubunduka is meant to pop out to pop up okay so and the triangle here that we see is uh in chiluba is called uh lubandu okay it's not really a triangle it's a it's a it's a piece of um I, I can say how can i say it's it's much more about the angle than the the triangle shape itself okay it's called lubandu maybe you may not you may not find it in the online chiluba dictionary but i can provide you the document so you, you can see so you can see here you have a bandu of the triangle and you have again bandu b and d here plus you have the chi okay so you can read it chibundu bundu which is um uh, 5 a.m so we can clearly see that i mean it's not simple evidence that we we have here okay it's and everyone can try to to look into all those uh stuff and you know uh make up his own mind and but what we we can uh, we can we are sure of is ancient egyptian is an african language there is no doubt about it the structure of the the, the word and um the the, the words themselves the names of animals the names of things i mean if it was not an african language it it, it, it could have been very very difficult for us to, to translate. I live in Israel. I speak Hebrew I fluently. I went to college here. I can read and write. So ancient Egyptian is not a Semitic language. There is no doubt about it. We have nothing in common. Of course, linguist, in a linguistic point of view, like, you know, Brother Asar can, you know, do the, in his research, you can, he knows how to deal with cognates, to deal with other, but for a common person, Really, we, we will not find any similarities between those um, between the Semitic languages and ancient Egyptian uh, language. That's why you you might have noticed today the debate is more about the DNA. The Europeans they run away from linguistic. They don't show up anymore. They more most of the time talk about you know they made some DNA tests tests and where they found out uh, we have a Z chromosome Z B X I don't know what you know nobody understands exactly so they don't show up in linguistic because they know they know that they have already uh, lost on this uh, field thanks to people like Check Up the Diop Ubenga uh, Professor Teofile Ubenga from Bilolo and also other brothers from from the US from the United States like uh, brother Asa did a very great job and in unfortunately in in French speaking countries in African uh, in Africa we lack a, a little bit uh, this uh, you know people like brother Asa who are doing their work independently and it's you see I, I have to to come to him <laughs> to present my work. I never this is the first time I show 
this um you know i present it publicly like this so uh thanks again to to brother asa for this opportunity uh yeah i'll see if i can get you um you you're familiar with brother mukasi um, uh, mobali mukasi yes 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 i watch uh, yeah. some of his show yeah I, we, we can definitely get you there yeah and then you know you can speak uh and present in french uh there I, I think it's it's Congolese. He, he, he was in Kinshasa. Um, yeah, I think, he's, uh, he's from Congo. Yeah. Yeah. I'll mute it out now. Okay. So do do you have any further questions? Um, not me at the moment but we will we can open it up to uh the the audience so someone uh, i don't know if you can see on the screen uh, yes. brother obama mm -hmm. uh also out of africa i forgot what uh is he out of cameroon getting, um, oh, oh, where um, Gab from? Gabon, maybe probably i i, I don't remember from the top mm -hmm. of my head um, yeah but, he's asking he if, if questions yeah if chiluba has two on. infinitive verbal uh, prefixes yeah ku is ku is um is a is a general um, bantu uh prefix for infinitive ku or ko okay and you have d how i can say d is in english if i say uh to die and dying you understand uh if i say to eat and eating D represents more the, the activity, okay? The what that verb does, and the the ku is the the general infinitive for the bantu. I have um, it, it is also one of the mysteries here. We don't know why the the ancient Egyptians they wrote mostly D and not the ku or ko of the bantus. It's also some it, you know it this as I say it's five thousand years of writing. Uh, 4,000 years of writing and history that we are trying to rebuild. So it's it's, uh, it's not something that I can do alone or I can do in five years, not even in 10 years. Okay. So we have to do to sit with linguists, with uh, experts that have to do the job. My job is uh, at this moment, I'm focusing on the, uh, the scripts themselves. Okay. Uh, trying to understand each part of it, each symbols what it means how do you call that symbol in in chiluba language or in lingala sometimes in swahili um or kikongo i go with uh, those three languages that i can um, more or less uh, understand very well so <clears throat> i guess okay so i guess uh, that's the answer so we can use d or we can use ku okay one is the infinitive one is the the action for example, if I say kulela, it means to give birth. Dilela, it means giving birth. Okay, so that's uh, basically how I can say, explain it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, so I don't see any. Uh, and I know they've been going back and forth in this chat hmm. on on this word for fear. So I thought we're going to always find it. What was he saying? He's he's coming out of uh, South Africa. Zulu. This is Zulu, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so he, he's gonna have to explain that. Uh, I didn't um, also, uh, Obama is from Gabon right mm -hmm. i know bam is a name from gabon who <laughs> we share a lot a, a lot a lot together they they um they take it people who live in gabon congo brazzaville and kinshasa the capital of um of the drc is actually built on the take um tribe land so yeah we would know <laughs> more or less <laughs> yeah indeed indeed and um while we have a little time, 
one or two kind of uh, kind of give the experience of like when you and I are are sharing information uh, or exchanging or whatnot. And so, you know, is is he given me his presentation uh, some time ago. Um, and, and I asked him if he, you know, uh, to come on, on the, the program and present it. Uh, but of course, as he said, he lives in Israel. So y'all know what's been going on in Israel. So, you know, had to wait for some, some time for things to cool off just a little bit so that we can uh, bring you this information. But since that time, uh, I was interested in, you know, I'm, I'm putting together a presentation right now uh, inspired by uh, uh, his conversation regarding the, you know, the word for um, the Ba mm -hmm. in ancient Egyptian. And so, you know, one of the things that I always have to uh, remind folks is this particular note that I have bolded here in um, from this text here, the Handbook of Historical Linguistics by Brian D. Joseph and Richard D. Janda. And so uh, this is Lyle Campbell's article. He's a major historical comparative linguist and but mainly deals with like Indo-European languages. However, uh, he has an article titled in this book here, How to Show Languages Are Related, Methods for Distant Genetic Relationship. So he's attacking the, the idea um, of like the green birds method, right? And the, and the lookalikes. And so of course he's promoting the historical comparative method and, and alignment. So, you know, with green bird and what others do is that they find words that seem to look like uh, words in other languages and because they look alike and may appear to have a similar meaning that they they argue that this is evidence for a genetic relationship <laughs> right and what you know those of us who do historical comparative linguistics know and understand is that you know languages diverge over time from the from the parent language and sounds evolve in the language so at incredibly long distances between you know the the modern time and when the, the proto language existed you would expect to see more different pronunciations than exact pronunciations so if you find exact pronunciations then you have to question well you know is this a coincidence is this the result of borrowings, you know, from one of the languages because there was in close proximity in the life? But in fact, when they, when you can show regular sound meaning correspondences and the pronunciations are different, this makes the argument stronger. Obinga has made this argument as well, but this makes the argument stronger for a genetic relationship. So he says in this, on this page here, while some sounds may stay relatively unchanged, many undergo changes which leave phonetically non-identical correspondences. One wonders why correspondences that are not so similar are not more common in such proposals when people be talking about languages are related. The sound changes that lead to some non-identical correspondences often change cognate words so much that their cognacy is not apparent. These true but non-obvious cognates are missed by methods such as multilateral comparison aka mass comparison which seek inspectional resemblances then it goes in and gives some examples here of words that look different in indo-european but um are in fact genuine cognates based on sound meaning correspondences and the sound laws right so you know um looking at that one slide that he had uh matter of fact i'll just go to it since i still have your thing up um, i think this is it 
So if you can see here, he has the word for he goat and pumba, and then night bird and pamba, and then incense and pimbo. Right? You can you can see that there's a consistent P dash M V consonant sequence in these various words. And so the fact that he had three of them here lets me know that, you know what, let me look for some other because you know three is the minimum, five is you, there's no argument at that point, right? Um, and so when when I know for a fact based on some other studies, some other comparisons that the the B R or the nasalized Google latrio here in Chiluba corresponds to P L as well as B L. And then any variant that the L becomes. So N D or D, because you know, uh, L becomes D before, after N, and L becomes D before I, right? Um, so just keeping those sound changes. And so when I'm looking at all the glyphs that have the, the V, the so called Ba pronunciation, we can see a consistency here even with the um the because there's one for a snake you can see the snake here with the crown and you can see his reduplication here and we can see that the second so um the root is ba so like when you say mamba like the mamba snake uh, but you can see here's this mamba ba uh it has the reduplication just like you would see here. So we're just missing this. This syllable fell off uh, in terms of this word. Uh, so when like uh, for for those in the United States, you know, they call Kobe Bryant the Mamba, right? Uh, the the late basketball player. But you know, it's also a word. This is the jar, and then you have the Pamba bowl, which also would I would correspond to this Chibalu. Half of the calabash use as a container. Um, and then this ba here uh, represented this man holding the, the hoe. Um, and so on the online dictionary, you'll see Lupamba, large hoe, and Kapamba, small hoe. But you said that, um, clarify how, it, how else it is used. Sorry? Can you clarify how else that that word is used for pamba and kapamba? Oh, yeah, it's it's used for a a used hole. I mean, a, a hole that was used for a very long time, and it's it's you know, um, it it it's kind of lost its its um its shape or its mass. Okay, an old hole, if I can say so. So it's also used in a context uh, to describe a old old person, an old man or an old an old woman. And in even in even in the case of a human being, you will still use uh, the the sentence like muelo akapamba. If I, I said asari motep is a muelo akapamba, is a whole is a old whole. It means you know it's an old person, it's a used person. <laughs> I wonder because you know there's a word ba that means or or it may have a, a suffix to it that means bald head in in the Egyptian language. I don't know if I have it on the slide. Um, but, but what I also show here is that even in Egyptian, the the B, uh, B and M corresponds internally in Egyptian with W. So when I'm doing in my comparisons, I always look for variants of the same word in the semantic space using, because that would tell us that maybe at one time there was a prefix or a suffix that put a, a phoneme in between vowels that shaped how it became pronounced by the time the writing came. So, so like you had mentioned earlier that uh, 
that the Egyptians didn't always show the, the prefixes and suffixes to words. Mm -hmm. And what, you know, for example, like what Boley would argue is that the, the affixation that was common in the proto language for, for common Bantu was really kind of dying out. Okay. And this is so they so you know it wasn't really as productive, and and so it was dying out there. And I can say the same thing even when we start looking at the Sumerian language, like the prefixes and suffixes aren't there, but the roots are. And so, but anyway, so you, like we see this word here, gruit, meaning gift mm -hmm. and offerings. Then you have this word here, there, meaning to serve, because there was a um. There's, there's this root also means to carry and and to like give like and to be a service. So like with this T nominal suffix here, so we can see that the syllables have switched and the B became W. So when this form became gifts and offering. So but for, to, in, to in serve, I, I think I, I think the the kuaba to to serve it's um, it has many meaning. But yes, the, the, the root word is uh, is a gift to offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and this is why like um, there's there's I don't have it on this slide, but there's there's a root here meaning to carry and, and to give. So like if someone is serving you something, right? Like like if you was to go to a restaurant and eat and they would carry and serve you and, and to be a service, that's 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 how we say it. So is used to, in the to, same to, way. To, to, carry, to, to carry, to carry, we said ku, kuambula. As we said, you know, the, the prefix will not be written. The la, the the, yeah. the final um, ula. So um, yeah, kuambula is to to carry. Exactly. So, um, but we can see here this bella friendly gift. Yeah. So so remember what I told you that the the t will also. So I don't know if this is like a, a prefix with the, um, like if this was an N, because you know the N becomes M in, in, in front of a, a labial uh, sound in Chinuba. But remember I was saying we, we, we need to start testing for if this suffix T also corresponds to N prefix in Chinuba. Or, or and, and this D, may or, be. Or D. D well, I know for a fact it's, is is G and and G, in in uh because there's a T verbal suffix as well in Egyptian, and and so just so that G verbal suffix that you was talking about earlier, that that would be that. So I know I know that for a fact. But what but I what I also show is that the T also corresponds to move in Shiluba that that right. prefix. But when I'm now you know looking at your analysis. What I'm now going to have to do is do an experiment to see if there's a consistent correspondence of T and mm -hmm. N as a prefix in Chinuba. Okay. Because this, this right here, so the fact that this is a noun friendly gift shows that you know there was a root that this nominalizes this verb, fella, you know, here. Mm. So, um, and so we can see here, for example, the, the the B or P or whatever became W and, and here so you have to harvest and then cupola to harvest pick to gather right and you can see these different prefixes and suffixes you know to the root yield of a harvest grain etc mm -hmm. um, and so this this stuff and so this is one that I'm I'm, I'm looking more into as well because remember I said B's and W's also correspond with M and the nasalized Google Latrille is an R type sound. It sometimes either become N or it will become R. And so you had this this root here, Meru or Merawi, uh, desert, right? And then, you know, um, Chipele, wilderness, desert. But you always had this, this word that they say is a sapat, a district, a known, a country, a county, a state, but it also so means desert, and so you know this would be consistent with what we we've, we've shown in in 
here as well. And so I, I tell folks that again, this is a prefix. Yeah, for, for um, the for this, the this, for the districts, I have two two ideas. I mean, you can see um um in some some writings they they put an S and a P or or B if you want. And in others, they will add a a bird, a kind of a, a flying bird, a duck. Okay, so we have two words in Chiluba to say uh, district or or even like uh, clans or tribes. Okay, we, we use the, the the first word is Chisamba. Chisamba is means a a group of people, uh, a tribe, and a a clan or a nation. And we have. The second word that properly means a district is chipapu. Chipapu, and this is the other word that where they use the bird. Okay, and a flying bird um, in Chiluba is is the verb is is kupapuka. Um, okay, you know in in most Bantu languages um, the uh, the bird's um, wings is called uh, lipapu. Or di pua pua, or these uh, sort of things. So kupapuka is like you know uh, to to fly with fear for birds, especially. So it's the same word chipapu that means district in Chiluba language. So we have uh, we have um, uh, chipapu and we have chisamba. You know those, those two words um, more describe the first one. Chipapu describe the land only. But Chisamba de describes also the people. Mm. So I'm trying to. Well, this is for a different thing. I'm doing. Um, this is one. Of, this is my P correspondence. This is my PL correspondence. Do I have it here? Okay, so no, that was a different word I was thinking of. Uh, it's Puku Puku. Uh, but here's this, you also have, so, so for example, like um, that Iber, this word meaning to dance, Iber eats, dancer, but it also has a bird and insect, and Iberu, dance, entertainment, Iberet, dancer, right? Um, I equate this with Kukula, um, to shake, and Papala, flap the wings, dance while waving your arms. Uh, to get agitated, snort, or shake. And, and there's other languages where um, I do this expanded comparison. And and so the dancing, I, I equated, have you seen like in, in, in East Africa where they do those shoulder dances mm -hmm. and, it, and it looks more like a, a like a, 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 a shaking, you know, of the, of the upper body and the light. Um, yes, and this becomes the words for for dancing, and so um, I don't have the collagen up here uh, to 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 show, and so I have Sumerian can, as well. You, you can also check uh, imba for for I mean dance or music. Um, it's also I mean a very, very common uh, word in Bantu languages, in Lingala, uh, in Swahili, um, in Swahili, yeah, kuimba. In Chiluba Kuimba, in Lingala Kuyemba, in uh, in and um, the, this word gives us as well um, like music instruments like marimba, you know this is the yeah. yeah. So see, the the word is imba, and you know all the are dancing and uh, as well. It's also you you might also find the same word the in, in Egyptian dictionary means to dig. In in reality, the the meaning of the word imba is not really to sing or to uh, to produce music, but is to produce a rhythm or sound. Okay, kuimba is you know you are digging and you produce a tempo, a rhythm. The same way with music. So kuimba in chiluba it means to dig. It means to make music. It means also to beat someone. Kuimba mututu. You beating someone, you hitting someone, but it's always the same thing. You are producing a rhythm, and from the, this very same word comes the the what they we use to ib 
like the heart in ancient Egypt. In reality, it doesn't mean the heart, it means the pulse. Okay, the heartbeat. Kwomba. Yeah. There the 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 um the initial I E turn into O Kwomba. So the heart, we if I want to say it in Chiluba today, I'll say Ngomba. Okay, it's the the one that beats that produce a tempo that produce a pulse you know and it, i don't know if you can see on your screen here but I, I have that word on the slide it's the very bottom one so that omba beat set of the heart of the pulse to stir and then chiombelu music instrument umbella correct, correct. uh Yombelo, musical instruments in gomba mm -hmm. one whose function is to beat the drum, play the xylophone or another instrument, a performer or a musician. So I equate this with the wind to a temple musician. And so again, remember, B becomes W and the nasalized B and, and you, becomes A. You, you see the 10,000 here, the, yeah. the one we, are, we spoke about, the DB, the toba, the tobo, chitobo. Ah, I, okay. Yes. I, yeah, yeah. I promised I will send you the the PDF so you you can you can have a look. Right, we spoke about it. Yeah, and this one I have a question because okay, so um, and, and this isn't necessarily for you. I just need to figure out if GB is the root or mm -hmm. B with this um, uh, so-called voiced. Uh, fricative uh that this this is supposed to represent this sign you know but okay so this this sign here internally in egyptian interchanges with d the d glyph and z okay and intervocally when the d or the z becomes rotorized it becomes you know an r type sound so this is why my first this is my preliminary mm. uh correspondence that's why i'm saying because okay. i've been able to show that this also corresponds to mb right right so i'm glad to do a separate uh so and then that this j is also a prefix in egyptian it's a mm. fossilized prefix mm. in many cases so i have to do some more experiments on this because you know you, we may have two variations of the same word. Correct. One where the, so you said, um, what was the prefix on the tombo? On the uh, chitobo. Chi. Chitobo. The chi. Yeah. So if, so it could be possible. See, that's, that's, that's the thing. It, it, there's so many possibilities, and that's why I have to do these experiments mm -hmm. to eliminate the hypothesis. Because it could be like the word chombo, uh, chitombo is one dialect kept out of this three consonant sequence. This was dropped and they kept the ch ch chitobo, chitobo. Because if you say chitombo, yeah. it's, it's not a good word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry B without the nasalized yeah. M. Yeah. <laughs> so, because it, it's just the same way, like, for example, the word uh, seba uh, for, like, um, wise and clever and teacher in ancient Egyptian, it, you find it in Bantu in two different forms. So there was a form, like, you'll find it in the word, like, suba, saba, juba, etc., without the final nasalized uvula trio attached to it in chiluba is but a, then, it's a chizaba chizaba is a kind of initiation it's not normal studying it's a yeah. you know specific initiation and in the in the kikongo that verb means um to know to know to know things kuzaba yes. mm. exactly so that's that's the one that um that you find in, in a lot of Bantu languages that um mm -hmm. Is missing that final nasalized uvula trio, but chiluba, yeah. I forgot the word, 
but it, it, it is like a bula bala, something like this. And, and what was the S, which is a causative prefix in ancient Egyptian, of course, is suffix in Chinuba. Mm-hmm. Um, dang it, now I got to look up the term because I ain't going to. Ain't gonna be right. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me, because I might no, I may not have it. And see, I do so many. Um, I keep my stuff on Google Drive. <laughs> I don't want my computer. <laughs> Die with my work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just trying to open. Let me see if I have. Uh, so, like, um, so I don't have the the table here, but, but just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so. When we're talking about initiation and the what might see, so I redefined the word sibau as a clear sighted one. And and so, like for example, in the Yoruba language, using the same semantics when they talk about a civilized person, they say Alaju, uh, the one who has have been uh, whose eyes have been opened, right? So so this is it's in the context of initiation. Mm-hmm. So you can see that. Uh, what I show in the other slides is that um, the we're, we're talking about initiation and initiatic knowledge, right? right? And and this is from the Congo perspective. So that you know, um, uh, they'll say like "wa meso," the power to see what others will not see. And so we're we're talking about Landa and Zila and Tambu following the path of the sun. This is from um, Fukiao's unreleased. Mm-hmm. Uh, work that I just happen to have access to. So I'm trying to share without publishing, um, you know, his text. But um, so, but within in the the bigger conversation, I show that this word here, der, is the root, and then it has different prefixes, right? And mm-hmm. so, the, in this form of the word, the prefix is w. But in this form, the word prefixes s right and it's, it's almost this is the same word but in a different form suin when it because this is the same word that you use for like a doctor or or a physician or something like that or somebody with great knowledge and, you know and so even here this concept of to instruct literally to cause one to open eyes to give open eyes or to give sight basically is is the nature of the word itself um, but this isn't the slide I'm looking for. I'm trying to see if uh, did I? Let's see this one. Do a This is why I'm getting on Zahi Hawass. I still need to do a whole lecture on Kaninga, Congo perspective. Um, Still the same slide. Uh, Udum. Then I'm gonna go to Spirit While Living lecture. Let me add that in there too. Uh, Dealing with the word nature. Uh, Well, Well, we can talk about this too. So this is uh, my correspondences between tests. So just like how you said the head 
and um, you know, for being a person. So sometimes you may need to look at these type of correspondences as well. And just to make it bigger so you can see uh, for another time. So like TEP, the type of invoice and capital. Uh, I equate it with Sumba to buy, to get you Sumba, trade, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Sumba, meaning to borrow. And then TEP, dagger, with Sumba to, brand, to brandish, uh, for example, a weapon. But you can see a different form of it here. Mm -hmm. You can tell that the prefixes and suffix have been lost in a word or knife because T and S can change. Um, but you have Mulungu, knife. You see how the T suffix and the uh, Tep and Sambu meaning best. And Sambu, best, most, furthermore. Hasev to hunt with the girl stick. Somba to hunt to fish. Tep the form of the abstracts and so abstracts are you know the rock and words meaning place uh, so just like boo is an abstract prefix in bantu mm -hmm. uh, but it also means place is the same thing in egyptian and the like and, and i think this is the word you were talking about uh, saba saba mm -hmm. to play yeah um but you know you have this bearing here because remember I told you this corresponds to internally in Egyptian to Z and D. It does the same thing in Bantu uh, mm -hmm. as well. But that's neither here nor there. That's not what I was looking for. Where is my? Yeah, I'm just glad to find it at the time for this. Is. So yeah, it's stuff that I started and ain't finished. But I'm using the same slides. I can't find the one slide that I need. So we'll just table that. Maybe I'll have it in the greatest sense. But anyway, um, but yeah, folks, this is just kind of, I know it seems boring and we kind of all over the place. But this is kind of what we do. But is, is you know something also I wanted to to clarify is um, even though we we say that um, the ancient Egyptian texts are written in Chiluba language, but I we believe that you know since we speak almost the same language, all the Bantu people, I think any person can do that exercise. You know maybe not to become an expert, but you know to read some some words. We use the same word from, I mean, from Nigeria to Kenya, going all the way down to South Africa, you know, and um, also specifically like the the Congo people, the the Bakongo. Now, I mean, I'm not talking about the Congo as a country we know today, but the Congo nation or tribe. We we they, we have a very very close uh, relationship with with them. I mean the Luba and the Congo. So we share a lot in common. I mean it's uh, the the information we share is is really it's massive. Uh, you know it's from the king's titles to um, like the one you just showed now. Um, the 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 um, the cow the yeah. This one, Gomba. yeah. Um, I mean, the, the this cow you can see it's the, the sign of Kole Angola. Okay, so this 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 is the, the origin basically of the, the, the country Angola today. It was a an Egyptian title for kings and for God Himself for Osiris. So it's also a title that is still used by the Luba people and in uh, the side of Angola. For example, Queen Nzinga that we all know, she had this title of uh, Queen of Angola. Okay? Uh, Queen of Ndongo, but she was Angola. Angola of Ndongo. Angola it means a, a, a bull, a cow. Okay? A fighting bull. So in Chiluba, we have Mangola. We, we say it Mangola. So, so it's a, the, the person that, that possesses uh, power and and um, in in the, the angolan side they said angola 
So it's the same word, basically. But you, you find it in, in ancient Egypt, written in very different ways. Sometimes it's a falcon, sometimes it's uh, um, the bull, sometimes it's this um, it's, it's, it's bird. But it's the same word that gave the name to the, the country, Angola, as we know it today. <clears throat> Indeed, it's time uh, see if I... Because that's that's essentially the argument that I make for uh, for a for the word nature. So the the Angola is just a voice variant of Angola. Angola. Mm, correct. Correct. Uh, let me see. I just had one. I know they had a. Right. So so that's why I was saying that um, that all of these words or all of these symbols were represented by a single word in the proto language. But in the A40, because this is the word for nature, this is the word for whore or chorus, mm -hmm. and this could be nature, nesu, or whore. And then, of course, we know the nature side. Right? To but today we we use mostly the word the word bak, bakulu. We say it bakulu. We we don't really use like like Angola on um, on kulu um, to say you know the the ancestors. We 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 kind of I don't know why, but we chose to use the the, the word bakulu um, to say you know the the, the ancestors. Because I think that's this is probably a translation. Um, because you know, uh, if if I understand correctly, like kulu is a common word meaning ancient and old, right. or or right. that which came before. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, they would come from the same uh, meaning. But this is more in primitive times. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, so in other related languages, you would see it as toro, spirit or phantom, and toro, spirit of the passion lineage and tree. In Ewe Toro, guardian spirit, Wolof Toro, uh, protector god, etc. Um, and so here's my uh, correspondences, Chilu um, with KL and then the Ch R, right? Um, and so, you know, the word Netur means power, divinity, divine, strong. And so you would have ukole, strength, energy, or to express or to make, uh, or the ability to make uh, things happen. And mm -hmm. so you would have like netteri, natron, soda, tron, which is a kind of salt, which, you know, it's just mukele, mukela, mm -hmm. salt. Um, and, you know, again, this word kale here is a variant that I found in the dictionary strong, well, vigorous, firm, etc. Uh, and then you have netterit, fixed, set, solid, firm, hard, etc. So the the the, the, the book the book colleagues also um, what what we call um, a car uh, the car the Egyptian car okay so if you can see like to say kole sometimes they, they may put this uh, the the falcon they, sometimes they would also just use what we call the car yes. the car uh, this what they say the spirit. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 the energy. Uh, so it, yeah, it's basically the same word. Bukole. Um, it's um, the 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 life energy, and the same word bukole. You will find it in some Egyptian uh, scripts. They will put three of them, three ka sign symbols. Okay. It's yeah. plural. It's plural. It means we we say makole. Okay, it means a lot of strength, but it's magic strength. It's not like a normal, you know, uh, life energy 
uh, that we know. It's someone that possesses the Makole. It's is a is a is a magician. Is a, a king. Is someone that can see in the night. You know, in the spiritual world and that. So we do find a lot a lot of um, this uh, information, and you can also sometimes see it, like when they say the car name. Uh, in Chiluba, we, we, we say it's, it's Dina Jabukole, okay? The name of strength. It's a name that they give to a person. We Luba people have five names, like the Egyptians. You know, the birth name, the name of strength, the makumbu, the, the praises. We have the name of mapanga. If we have gifted person, you know, we have exactly five names like the Egyptian. Of course, it was stopped during the colonial time and... Uh, they decided that you know to track an individual, he must have one name. So the Belgian, um, you know, banned the system of having many different names because you might meet someone today. He say, "What's your name? My name is Asari Motep." And tomorrow, what's your name? No, my name is, uh, you know, um, Smith Johnson. And uh, you know, people used to have many names. So when exactly. if, it, if someone rebels against the colonial administration, you can't track him. You can't track his family. There is no family name. There is nothing you can find. So the Belgian decided to kill that system. And, you know, they. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, the Europeans, they, they spend so much money looking for ancient Egypt and stuff. But when they moved to Africa, they killed ancient Egypt, you know, by killing our traditions. <laughs> <and, laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 they what just. I to show. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was, just, I was just saying the same thing. You know, they, they spend a lot of money building museums and research centers looking for Egypt somewhere else. I don't know when they, they found Africans, they said there's primitive people. So you must end your primitive stuff. But the primitive stuff is exactly what we have in, in ancient Egypt. Yeah. Indeed. But I was just showing you here like how they, um, how they reconstruct a proto Bantu code mm -hmm. to become strong to work. And how that code becomes cole, you know, for, for strength and, and variance. And it becomes incole, an eminent or powerful man. And incole, incola, or inquele, inquela, uh, meaning God, and incole, meaning spirits or, or ghosts. But that same root gives us hawk, bird of prey, crocodile. So mm. it's, it's that same semantics that we were talking about earlier with the other words. How the the same word for animal has to deal with this ferociousness, you know, right. and so the, the ultimately it comes from a word for power. There's a I don't have it on this uh, presentation, but I, I do the, the same correspondences that I'm doing here mm -hmm. with nature. I do with uh, Chiluba with KL as well for the dotted H and R, and and then I do the dotted H and R and sure and show that they're the same word. So this tells me again is two different groups that came into Egypt who who spoke a related language, but who um, I get your point came coming in different times. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because like these are two different forms of the same word that went through two different uh, uh, phonological evolu uh, evolutions of the phonemes here mm -hmm. um, for the for the same term. And this he I need, I need to find because I, I want to I want to I want to show maybe it's the high value man was it because uh, 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 in that in that book that I that I mentioned earlier by Dr. Chilin Malema Mukinge. So he gave me, uh, you know, a native group of speakers, but he's Christian. Uh, uh, So 
So, um, so he he talks about in the book. He says human beings are given opportunities to ascend into spiritual states while on earth. Mediums through trance, seers by revelation, ordination into priesthood, and consecration to certain high-ranking social statuses are most known forms of spiritualization. Uh, so now he goes to the journey of consecration. So the Luba culture values legitimate marriage and marriage stability, wealth achieved through personal hard work and winning the race for the chieftaincy. In each case, if the ancestors are pleased with the accomplishments, they will call the achiever to seek spiritual anointing, consecration from an authorized established achiever in the same domain. A community builder as a husband and father of many healthy children and a contributor to significant growth of the extended family, he would be called to be consecrated as an accomplished achiever of wealth, a mukola. Right. I put here netter. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a peer of past achievers, living and dead. Procuring many wives for self and relatives was the most praised accomplishment, qualifying one to run for chieftaincy. The race was a long and costly process. The candidate had to justify incumbent chiefs and power giver dignitaries and measurable appetite for riches. Finally, victorious of this long and costly competition for the chief and throne, he was invested chief or an mm -hmm. Um Investiture and chieftaincy. The investiture ceremonies included several acts of consecration, elevating the incumbent chief to a spiritual status. Altogether, investiture rituals are believed to turn the incoming chief into a, to the peer of the spirits of the past leaders and them his partners in the governance of the chief. And the reason why I have this um, citation here, because it, it better explains what, you know, the anthropologists call, um, quote unquote, divine kingship. Mm -hmm. Right. And and why the same word for nature is used for the same word for king, and and what that means, and if we understand that a inkole is a prominent and powerful man, and that this word deals with power itself, but also anyone who has great ability to create or make things happen, mm -hmm. all of this stuff starts to make sense. Okay. Yeah, it's you know, a, it's, it's, it's a person like is 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 a prolific person. He has many children. So and the Ndela and Ndela is a is in in fact a, a person with you know many descendants. So if I can also as, associate this word Ndela with with Netter, so yeah, it's it makes sense. Indeed, and I think that was it for now. But um, yeah. And you got anything else to share in these last fifteen minutes? Well, I'm 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 good <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> and so I haven't been keeping up with the chat, and I know they probably not still arguing. Uh, you know, Saturday morning. So, wow. uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Usa, so Kwimba is to dig in his Zulu. And oh, okay. uh, Ghani, uh, to Rich the Elder, peace and blessings to you. Uh, so, Ukwemba is, is like Kwimba in, in Chiluba, to dig. Yeah. And you, you'll find a lot of Commonality between Kikongo, yeah, uh, Chiluba, and Isizu. But Kikongo's... Isizu has more prefixes. Exactly. I think yeah, they still they're, held they're... on to uh, a lot of the Proto Bantu prefixes and, and stuff. So, but there was a lot of sound changes in Isizu, Isizu as well. And, and, uh, and Swahili, Swahili as well. Particularly, Swahili spoken in Kenya is very, very close to. 
um, to languages spoken in, in the Congo. Like Tanzanian Swahili is, is much harder for me to understand as it has a lot of um, Arabic input. But the Swahili spoken in Kenya, in Uganda, the, I mean, we share a lot, a lot of vocabularies together. This is buying Kobe is the name here in the Gambia region. What would be good is to see what that means. Mm -hmm. Correct. Language was you, you speaking the other? I mean, we can. This is Zulu.net. Right, so let me share my screen here. Let me stop sharing and present, share screen. No, not that. So, you know, I go, I use all my. Resources. Let's just put here. And this is Zulu. And so I hope you can see it. Yeah. So, uh, okay, this is on the right hand side. So it's, it's Saba, Saba, uh, right here. Uh, but I have to do a full screen. So, like, okay, I'll just do it on here too. So let me. Uh, so we have that, and this is Zulu. So now we can go to the TLA. Thursday, Thursday, the Saras. And so you just type in the word clear. And I think it's going to be in the third. So that's going to be set. So, so here's the word here to have fear. So it would appear that, you know, especially if this uh, this sound here, I mean, well, anyway, it goes, it could be, uh, because cause this corresponds to D and Z itself, uh, like this could be the root here with this being a, uh, a, a causative. Right. And, uh, And so, matter of fact, uh, so, so because it has this, this, uh, this here. So, like, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, so if we go back to, so you see how it has two forms of the same word: it's saba, saba, and then ubalo. So, if we was to go. Uh, to this number here. So remember, I was saying that in, in Bantu, you have words, you have two forms of the same word to where if in Egyptian, there is like three consonants in sequence, mm -hmm. dialect A will have the first two, but then dialect B will have the last two. Right. And and I know for um, a fact that in uh, my comparisons in Isi Zulu, um, the B in Egyptian corresponds to B. Mm -hmm. And then the L corresponds to the nasalized uvulatrial or R uh, sound in uh, Egyptian. So uvalo. And, and, and this is the boo, so this was boo, so boo valo. Um, 
And so, yeah, I need to look more into that. But that's that's the the, the point. So you can see, you know, you have to do some more tests to, to prove, right. you know, what we're saying here. Uh, but so when when he looks and sees that word Saba, a Sahaba, meaning uh, fear in ancient Egyptian, you know, he has a. Uh, let me see what else he said. He's also looking it up. What I fail to do is find anticipations for that in the TLA and other places that are still investigating. Maybe in a there is a, a very interesting Maybe. word in, in, in Zulu when when they, they ask someone, How are you? How they, they answer. I think they, they say something like, uh, uh, some, something like that. If I'm not mistaken, you can correct me. And that that word is um, it's a kind of close to what the uh, what is in ancient Egypt what they say nefer <coughs> to say good or or well uh, because um, they how uh, anyway how I I try to figure out that word I the the, the symbol used in the word nefer. Is a is a kind of uh, a guitar, an old guitar of two with two chords or, or one chord, and it's called it's called dipilo, I think in Zulu and in Chiluba as well. Okay, so pilo pilo um pilo in Chiluba it means well, excellent, uh, fine. It's a word that is not very commonly used, uh, but you can see you can still people use it. Like journalists and you know, uh, like people who speak sophisticated, if I can say so, Chiluba language. But it seems to be the same, like what the Zulu used to when they ask you, "How are you?" You say, "I'm well, I'm good." It seems to be the same. So if you can maybe check that also and confirm. I mean, the the musical instrument, the pillow, and, and the the other word to say well. <laughs> Hold on one second, because I just had a you know when I was looking through. Uh, the priest says, like, I had a whole set of slides comparing Nefer with Shiluba. And let's see if I can find it. That wasn't it. to language oh and just for the for the record i'm going to put together an online conference for october 2024 okay uh, on egypt as a uh, egypt as a well it's, it's going to ask the question you know uh Based upon, I don't know if you read Dr. Bilolo's open letter to the uh, Egyptologist. I forgot what year it was, but he, he wrote an open letter challenging the Egyptologist who uh, didn't accept his uh, his abstract okay. for. Okay, they they didn't accept his abstract for you know this conference but they gave no reason why mm -hmm. and and it's supposed to be an international conference and of course it was asking for original stuff but by the time the conference came yeah, i think you, you, you sent me that document conference. right yeah mm -hmm. and um so but the, the 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 title of his his uh his abstract was um egyptian a language back to question mark right mm -hmm. and so um so i want to take that question i'm just going to add the word culture egyptian you know is egyptian or is egypt or egyptian i'll, I'll wear it correctly by the time you know is it is it a bantu language or is it bantu language and culture you know mm -hmm. then center the conference around you know, evidence for and against such an yeah. argument and have okay. you know, people from around the world okay. uh, 
to. to uh, I, I hope the, the, the Europeans will come. <laughs> I hope they will too. And, uh, but I don't know if you can see. Yes. So this is on my analysis on Nefer, mm -hmm. uh, which you can find in, but I, I was mainly dealing with Europe, but there was some that I did here with, uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. with Shiluba. So, so, but this is the, so, you know, most people will argue that this is the heart and, yeah, some and, people say uh, so. Yeah, but I think it's a it's a it's a guitar because you you can find the same word used for a perch, you know, a, a stick. A, you can find it in Egyptian dictionaries, so it's written exactly yeah. the same. So I I believe that is the, I mean the the, the word is really it, it's not a heart. It's it's not a heart. It's a, it's a music instrument. <clears throat> Uh, well, this is Europe up here that I'm doing uh, East comparisons. Uh, right. uh, I was trying to see if one of them I at least had. Well, I say if you want to say never mm. in Yoruba, you would say Iwakbele. And then Chinuba would be one of these two variants. Mm. Or also you can just say, say Muena, Muena Mpila. Yeah. Mpilu is what I'm saying. I'm saying Mpila. Mpilu. <coughs> I don't have my, my Luba comparisons. Cause yeah, because I remember I was doing it's in the book though, but uh, I have to look into that. Okay. But, uh, but I show here, like, with the, when you see the um or when that it, the, the W corresponds to K. So we can tell that, you know, at some point it was like whoop, whoop, and it became whoop in Egyptian, and it remained K. In Chiluba for for these particular words here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, so that's the that's the ancestral, you know, proof of what not. And so here's some correspondences here. With mm -hmm. But what's what I'm I'm getting ready to do is that um, because you, you know the word nefer is used in nobility uh, names in ancient Egyptian, and I have a text that deals with Eastern Bantu languages where the cognate for nefer is also used in nobility names. Okay. That I that I want to demonstrate and show. Okay. But yeah, I thought it was more than that, but that's not. Uh, yeah, we we'll probably definitely exchange on this and see what will come out. <clears throat> indeed, indeed. Well, I'm not going to hold up too much of your time, um, but I do because I got to get ready for another presentation. Okay. In, in 30 minutes. So, um, so, uh, but yeah. So you know anything that you're working on in particular. Uh, to let people know, um, I'm trying to get you to, to write. Yeah. Did someone even ask, is there any place where you can go to get these correspondences? So we're working on getting him to, to yeah. write a lot of this now. Hmm. The, currently, the, the biggest project we're working on with Professor Bilolo is to try to translate. I mean, not really to, I mean, we are building a dictionary, um, an Egyptian um, script, Chiluba language. So that is the work we are doing now. We we, we are going to do it through the INADEP, is um, the African um, 
uh, Antiquity Research Center, which is based in, in Kinshasa. It was created by the African Union, but the, the, um, the, the headquarter is in, in Kinshasa. So through that center, we are, we are still, you know, um, try to fix that center. It didn't really function properly for the last 30 years. So we are rebuilding it. We are trying to set up facilities, rooms for um, people like you who will come and, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about accommodation, transportation, food and stuff. So you can come there one month, two, three seats and work you know, with the Luba uh, linguists, anthropologists, and sociologists, anyone that can bring its contribution to this, um, to this big, uh, you know, big enterprise. So this is the, the biggest project we are working on now with Professor Biller and other partners as well. But he is the main, uh, the main lead of this uh, the project. So probably, you know, through our exchange, I will let you know when things are ready. So I think the, the opening, <laughs> you'll be one of our our guests uh, and um, yeah, so that's what we are doing now. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, uh, something that. Uh, yes, that is the where, in, in a depth. Yeah, and I'm 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 supposed to be kind of heading the uh, the American wing. Uh, okay. Cool. Did it just? Oh, that came back. Oh, there we go. So you know this this uh this connection here doesn't uh be the best, but um but anyway, but I I do appreciate your time and you sharing with us your your research, and uh, you have a Facebook page, don't you? Yes, yes. <laughs> we, I, I have. Um, the, we were friends in the my previous account that was um, closed by Facebook because I published this. Uh, you know the the presentation I did now about the um, the mudinta. You know those dancing ladies. So they said I'm promoting yeah. child, child pornography or something. So they closed my account. <laughs> yeah, they start, <laughs> they ask for my ID and stuff. I said I don't want to give my ID. Why, why should I give my ID to Facebook? Yeah. They closed it. So we were friends on that account. But <laughs> I created a new one. <laughs> All righty. So um, well, so, we'll, we'll, we gotta get you your own website. So people can go to your to your website right. where you can publish all the ancient Egyptian photos without AI thinking it's child pornography. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me on your show. I'm very I really appreciate it, and I'm very honored. Uh, you know, as I said in the beginning, I was once a follower. Now I'm on your show, so <laughs> I, I made some progress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank indeed, you. Very indeed, much. and it's always it's a, it's always good and a blessing because, um, as I've always stated, like you know, there's certain things that I can see from the United States because I'm looking at a, a wide net, and you know, I have that that comparative skill, but it's nothing like having someone on the ground. Like, like I get it all the time. And, like the right. people in the chat, or I get private messages. They be like. Yeah, and in our language, we do this. And I didn't even right. help me to realize that we do this, and I didn't even make the connection, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, and I get that all the time. <laughs> or they'll just tell me some stuff that they do, and I'm like, hold on, we'll go find, I'll find an equivalent, mm -hmm. you know, either in another African, you know, space or in ancient yeah. Egyptian mm -hmm. itself. So it's really a, a network of sharing of information that we're all exactly. bringing something to the table. And, yeah. and giving clarity on uh, this this important history, yeah. but um, yeah, I gotta go. All but right. it, until next time, and to you to be safe Thank you very out much. there. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully they won't draft you into the military. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> know, are you over age? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over age. I can't. <laughs> Even if I was, I was younger. I wouldn't. 
<laughs> it's, not, it's not my call to make. <laughs> it's two brothers fighting, so let them fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I do appreciate each and every one of you for joining the conversation. And so um, with that, we are out. Peace. <laughs> bye bye. Like I dropped the drop on car Uno. Yeah. Came to kick the door while the game man drew up. Pin game low. That's why they give me kudos. Uh -huh. Spied by the 3 0. 595, check it for a pack like. Hit the turn price, not to a baseline. Got a sign like I just hit the 8 5. Oh, I'm so ready. My enemies necessary. We gon' be legendary. Hold up. Mm. About to grow the payrolls. If you see the vision and you're with it, you should say so. Cause we about building, elevating the millions. This program was created with the love and support of all of our Patreon members and subscribers. If you are not a member yet and would like to see more content like this, consider becoming a member today. The link is in the description of this video. Your support is greatly appreciated.